good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And we believe that to be the situation for us as well. So we're going to go ahead and get into our word on to this evening. And this is part two of the session that we started on last week. And the title is Remain, Remain. And we were talking about the kingdom's perspective on productivity. How does the Bible, how does the word of God view performance? How does it view productivity? And so um, I'm going to read a little bit of the, the main scripture, the focal scripture. And then I'm going to do a really brief review on the things we talked about last week. And then we want to go into the remaining portion, the, re <laughs> the portion about remain uh, for our session on today. So the scripture we took from the book of John, the gospel of John, we read chapter 15 and we read uh, verses 1 through 17. But I'm not going to read all of it in its entirety. I'm going to select a few pieces and then we'll do a review. Uh, John chapter 15, we're reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible, uh, beginning at verse 1. Christ is speaking to the disciples, and he says, I am the true grapevine. Okay, and in the multiple translations, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. The chapter two, uh, Verse 2 says, he, the gardener, cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. And in the Amplified Version, uh, verse 2 says, Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he, the vine dresser, the gardener, the husbandman, cuts away, he trims off, he takes away those branches that stop bearing fruit. And then it says, But he cleanses and he re repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. In other words, God takes responsibility for making sure that we were able to perform. God takes responsibility for making sure that we're able to perform, that we're able to produce, we're able to bear fruit. But he also has taken the responsibility of cutting off, trimming, putting over into a burn pile those branches that don't bear fruit. And I said on last week, I was telling you about the tree that I have in my backyard. Some of them, I have branches that have a lot of tangerines on them. I have branches that are still connected to the same tree. They have nothing on them. But what they're doing is they're pulling nourishment, they're pulling nutrients away from those branches that are trying to bear fruit. And so according to the scriptures, those branches that are diseased, those branches that are unproductive, those branches that are not producing, those need to be cut off so that the tree can bear more fruit, richer fruit, more excellent fruit. Okay. But here's the thing that I, I tried to stress on last week. It is not our, the church's responsibility to cut off branches. It is not our responsibility to trim off branches. That all belongs to the vine dresser. The scripture says he does the cutting. We supposed to, we're supposed to bear fruit. We're supposed to bear fruit. We're supposed to bear fruit that remain. Um, it went on to say in, in verse 9 of the chapter 15, I have loved you even as the Father loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obeyed my father's commandments and remained in his love. So Christ is saying, there's something to that remaining. And we, we understand in different translations, remain, abide, dwell. But it says, it all boils down to we stay there. We stick with it. All right, remain in my love, just as I remain in my father's love. I obey my father's commandments. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. That the scriptures are telling us that we don't have, it, it is not intended for us to walk around sad, downtrodden, broken, beaten, what we say, busted and disgusted. That is not the intent. We are supposed to have full joy associated with uh, the relationship that we have with Christ. He said, this is my commandment. Um, uh, verse 11, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other. In the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Okay, and then uh, verse 16 says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. 
so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. And I, I'm, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but that is, that is shouting content. Christ said that you obey me uh, my Father's commands, you fulfill joy, you produce fruit, you produce lasting fruit, and the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command, verse 70 says, love each other. So last week, a real brief review, we said that when Christ says, I'm the true vine, I'm the real vine, that's suggesting that there are other vines or trees or branches that are fake, false, imposters. Okay? Anything that is not Christ is not real. Anything that's not Christ is, not, uh, is fake. And so we should be looking out for those things that are not like Christ. We should be looking for those behaviors that don't exemplify the characteristics, the qualities of Christ. And we should be separating ourselves from those attributes. Okay? We, and um, we said that Christ was completely and totally surrendered to the will of God. Christ said, I'm the true vine. My father's the vine dress. That means I'm totally dependent on what my father wants for my life. Okay, and we gave some scripture to support that. Christ said, not my will. I'm not here to try to do my will. I'm trying to do what God wants me to do, what my Father wants me to do. Okay, we said that a fruitful vine is a symbol of Israel's obedience. A wild vine was, a, was symbolic of a disobedient Israel. Wild grapes or empty vines indicated unproductivity, disobedience, and waywardness. We told you on last week that when God first created the, uh, Eden, the garden, when he, when he said, let there be, there were no wild vines. There were no wild vines. Okay? Everything that God made was good, and it was very good. And so that means God is not a, he, I'm going to say it this way. He ain't cool <laughs> with wild vines. All right? A fruit tree, we told you on last week. It's opposed to, assigned to, created to, expected to, commanded to do one thing, bear fruit. A bear fruit. You, you shouldn't go, listen to this now, listen to this. You don't go to a fruit tree looking for ham. Okay? You should, <laughs> you should, <laughs> you should be going to a fruit tree looking for no chicken. A fruit tree does one thing, bears fruit. And when we go to go out and represent Christ, we should be bearing fruit. Okay, and some of the other stuff that we are bearing, it is not fruit. It is not fruit. And that's not coming from God. All right? All right. He, go, he said, he said uh, I, I said, based on what I read, Christ said, the duty of cutting away, trimming, pruning belongs to another. It belongs to the vine dresser. Our job is to bear fruit. Um, I said that, um, let me see what else I'm, that I want to review. Um, we talked about the enemy knowing the value of the fruit on the trees. When he was out in the garden with Eve, he knew what happened when, the, when you became disconnected. He was experiencing it firsthand. And so what he did is he tried to confuse that young lady, and, and he, he deceived her. That's the bottom line. He deceived her, and she, 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 she got deceived, and we'll just leave it at that. But he knew what it was. He he knew what he was doing, and, and, and don't miss that. When he comes into your life, um, he knows what he's doing. We don't always know what he's doing, but the enemy, the, the Bible said that the serpent was the most subtle, of all, most cunning of all of those animals that were in the garden. He knows exactly what he's doing, and when he put stuff in front of us to try to tempt us. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows where we are. Okay. And the way that we overcome the wiles of the enemy is by remaining connected to the vine. We do what the Lord says do, and we don't have to worry about the enemy having an upper hand on us. All right? All right, let's see. I believe that's everything that I wanted to cover in the review. So let's talk about remain. Okay, and I said remain, but I, I may use the term abide. I may use the term dwell. But the definition, as I understand it, is to make a place of consistent and persistent habitation. Okay, remain. To make a place of consistent and persistent habitation. And I was thinking about this, and I believe, I believe for a lot of us, this is going to make sense. Okay, 
Many people claim to abide or dwell, but they have mistakenly interpreted their actions or behaviors. Okay, what they do is they visit or they return. They come by or they stop in, but they don't remain. They don't abide. They don't dwell. All right? And, and here's this. When I, when I got this, this, this made so much sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you all. I don't know how many of us with children... And our children still list our address as their permanent home address. Okay? They say they remain there. They say they dwell there. They say they abide there. What they do, and, and they may actually go as far as to tell their friends, I'm going home. I'm going to spend the, I'm going to spend the uh, vacation, the holiday home. Well, but, but they don't live there. They put their, they, you, they still get mail there, but they come by and stop. They come by and visit. Okay? That's not remaining. That's not abiding. That's not dwelling. Now, I understand that there are times when we have to go because of stuff that may happen. Maybe we go on vacation. Okay? And I'm going to, but Dave, you do me a favor. Will you turn that because the, the wind is blowing in the mic? Okay. There are times when we go on, 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 we may have to go to a different place, whether by choice or by force. Inwardly, we refuse to accept that, or we refuse to get comfortable in that place because that's not our home. We're, now, that's when we're visiting, but we go back home to remain. Y'all know what I'm saying? If you go on vacation, you may, you may enjoy your time there, but that ain't home. I don't know if anybody else said, I can't wait to get home. I just... What's those saying? There's no place like that's remaining. That's dwelling. That's abiding. This stuff when we we come by and visit. Okay, and, and, and I think too many people are evaluating their relationship with the Lord based on a visitation. Okay. Yes, when I come there, it's fun. I laugh and I have fun, but then I leave. And when I'm leaving, I'm not remaining. When I'm not remaining, I'm not bearing fruit. When I'm not bearing fruit, I'm subjecting myself to getting cut off. Okay, and, and you, can, you can find whatever reaction you want to it. This is what the scripture says. Okay, God's going to cut us off if we're not bearing fruit. All right, our invitation is to remain. Our invitation is for them to bear fruit that is greater, richer, fuller. And the idea of remaining seems to suggest that it is continual and ongoing we don't we we don't come to church once a once in a while or on, on mother's day on, on resurrection sunday no we're coming and we're being fed but not only are we residing doing those services but all throughout our time we're staying connected to the vine so that we can be fulfilled we can be enriched we can be prepared to produce because when we're not producing, there is an accounting that's going to take place. We have to, we're going to have to give credit for it. All right? Remaining connected to the vine reinforces our humility. Re remaining connected to the vine helps us to understand it ain't got nothing to do with me. And we read in the scripture, Christ says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. But I chose you for a reason that you will bear lasting fruit, that you will produce fruit, that your fruit will remain, that your joy will be full. It has nothing to do with us, so it reinforces our humility. Lord, I am totally, completely dependent on you. You think about a, 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 a I'm going to go back to my tangerine tree. That tree is hooked up to that, hooked up to the branch. That tree is not in, I mean, I'm sorry, that fruit. It's hooked up to the branch. That fruit is not in the soil. That fruit is not in the soil. It's hooked up to the branch. That fruit is totally dependent on that branch to bring up some nutrients, to bring up some soil, to allow that fruit to produce. We are totally dependent on the Lord. And we have access to him through Jesus the Christ. It has nothing to do with us. All right? Some people are probably thinking, now, I'm not a person who has any influence on, on other people. People don't even know who I am. And we're talking about humility. I'm not in charge of anyone. I don't work around a lot of people. Nobody's listening to anything I say. 
if, if you have that mindset, I have some good news for you. You are a prime candidate for somebody who can go out and produce fruit. Because you already understand <laughs> it is, it's not on my gifting. Okay, I think a lot of us, we, we believe that it, we, we come with a set of skills, we come with a set of talents, we come with a set of abilities, and we, we have that charisma, and we just draw people to us. It has nothing to do with us. All of this is a result of being connected to Christ. And if you're not connected to Christ, I'm telling, I'm telling you, <laughs> it ain't you. It ain't you. I was thinking about Mary, the mother of, of Jesus, before we're talking about humility. Before um, the angel came and visited her, that woman wasn't running up and down the street telling, "Hey, y'all, look at me." I can't, I can't look. I, I, I'm pretty sure she wasn't out there. I don't know if they were bar hopping at the time, but I, I can't see her out there clubbing. I can't see her trying to bring special attention to her. And as a result of her humility, the Bible says that the angel told her, "You are favored, Pastor Shepherd." <laughs> The, the, the angel told her, you are favored of the Lord. Humility and being connected to the divine, it reinforces that humility. We remind ourselves, it's not us. All right? When we remain connected to, when we remain connected, we understand that the fruit brings glory to the tree. And we understand that the tree honors the fruit. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Okay, the fruit brings glory to the tree. Have, have you all ever been walking around and you saw a tree with a lot of blossoms on it? Okay, right before it starts to bud, right when it come out. And, and have you ever just, just uh, looked in awe or amazement at just how many blossoms on the tree? Have you ever seen the tree that didn't have blossoms on it? How much time you spend looking at that one? The fruit brings glory to the tree. You go out there, and, and, and I, my, my, my parents, they have all kinds of fruit trees in the yard. And they just look at it, and they tell me, man, look at how many grapefruits or oranges or, or peaches or, or persimmons or whatever on that tree. That fruit, the, the fact that that tree is bearing fruit, the fruit is bringing attention, bringing glory to the tree. But the tree honors the fruit. The tree provides provision for the fruit. They work in collaboration with each other. I'm reminded of, of God's command at creation. It was for the tree as well as the other living things to reproduce after their kind. Listen to this, guys. Reproduce after your kind. God said that when he created, he says, I'm going to put f seed in the tree, uh, in the fruit that's on the tree to reproduce after his kind. When we go out and we share our testimony we bear fruit we produce rich excellent sweet fruit that fruit the greatest benefit of the fruit is that somebody enjoys it okay if the fruit falls to the ground and rottens we don't we get no benefit no value out of it the greatest value of the fruit is that it's given and somebody else consumes it and they enjoy it okay that's what our lives are supposed to be that's a testimony that comes from our lives we go out and we share who God is and with us, what God is doing with us, and it benefits, it brings value to another life. And then what happens, the seed that we sow into them, they now start producing fruit, and then they go out and they tell that story to somebody else about the change in their lives, and it's reproducing after its kind. So you, and I know you all probably have never thought of this because I didn't think about it until just now. But you have... Now I'm going to go back to my tangerine tree. My tangerine tree has grand, grand fruit. <laughs> my tangerine seed, because it bears seed, if I take those seeds and plants, it's reproducing. So they have another generation of fruit. And then you, that one has more. And, then, and so what we're doing is reproducing after its kind. So we can have spiritual grand fruits. Okay, and y'all know what I'm saying, right? Y'all follow the grandchildren, the generations, by going out and sharing testimonies, by speaking about the goodness of God. And we produce in somebody else, and then they go and they reproduce in someone else, and it continues. It continues until the day of God's return. All right? Let's talk about abide. To abide in something is to accept, to act in accordance with a decision, to keep to 
to stand by or continue to remain in something. The instruction of Christ in this particular station is to remain or abide in him. He tells us to remain in him and he will remain in us. He told his disciples that he would give them the Holy Spirit who would be with them forever, never leaving, never forsaking them. The Holy Spirit would take up residence within our spirit. And pastor's been talking about this for the last several weeks, uh, probably maybe a few months now, about the spirit of God residing inside of us and, and the spirit of God uniting with our spirit. And that's what Christ promised. Christ said that I will send you a comforter. He will be with you. He'll be our escort. He'll be our, he'll guide us in all truth. He'll remind us of things that, that have not been, uh, that he's spoken and tell about things to come. That's the, that's the function of the Holy Spirit. All right. The act of the Spirit's presence alone brought about a fulfillment of fruit, fruitfulness. When, when Holy Spirit came in us, that in and of itself, if nothing else happened, that's an objection of of fruitfulness. The very fact that the Holy Spirit resides in us, we are saved, fruit. We are born again, fruit. We become heirs with Christ, rich fruit. We become a member of the royal priesthood, excellent fruit. All that's a result of us being spirit-filled. And spirit-filled, our filling comes at our salvation. Upon receiving salvation, Christ will abide in us through the Spirit. If the Spirit failed to reside with us, that would mean that Christ has misled us. And we know that Christ is not going to mislead us because that would make him a liar. And he lived his whole time on earth and he had no guile in his mouth. He didn't say a false word. So we know he can't lie. He said that the truth will remind, uh, remain and the Spirit will remain. He said that he is the true vine. He said that he is the truth. He said his word is the truth. We can depend on the spirit to remain, to abide in us. We can depend on the spirit to remain in us. The key is whether we remain in the spirit. Whether we remain in the spirit. And, and I'm, I, I don't want to project that I'm talking about somebody who's walking around all, and I, I'm, there's nothing wrong with this, but I'm not talking about somebody who's, walking around all day long and, and all you all are spirit focused spirit I'm not that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about connected remain connected obeying the commandments that God has given us that's what he asks us to do just because the spirit remains or abides in us does not mean that we remain or abide in Christ when we remain in Christ we keep his commandments is that simple that is that simple when we remain in Christ, we keep Christ's commandments. If we don't keep Christ's commandments, we are not remaining in Christ. Okay? We obey the instructions he left. We follow the pattern he set. If we remain in Christ, our natures change from fulfilling the desires of the flesh to fulfilling the desires of the spirit. Remaining in Christ results in us producing spiritual outcomes as opposed to working to fulfill the desires of our nature, of our flesh. Another benefit uh, or the outcome of remaining in the vine is that we get cleansed, that we get pruned, we, and that happens so that we can bear more fruit. The Bible tells us that God cleanses us. The Bible tells us that God prunes us. God cleanses us. God prunes us. How? Through the word, Christ said, through the words of the message that I've given to you. Okay, that's how you get cleansed. That's how you get pruned. But what's the purpose of the cleansing? What's the purpose of the pruning? To bear more fruit. He, uh, chapter 15 and 2, he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more fruit and richer and more excellent fruit. And I was doing my uh, search, and I found that, that, that and I, again, I told you all before, I'm not a garden person. I'm, I'm learning to become one. But I found out that a tree should be pruned every year. Okay? You look for the diseased branches or, or, or sections of the tree. Cut them off. Because if the disease can be on that and it's not attended to, then the disease can spread. We look for the unproductive ones. We look for the ones that are, that it may be pruning for, for an aesthetic reason. But, but there, every year, we should be going through a cleansing or pruning process. Now, I believe personally that for us who say that we're believers, we should do it a little bit more frequent than once a year. That's just my thought. Y'all can, I, I, I'm thinking we need, to, we need to be going like maybe daily, <laughs> put some stuff on the altar. All right. Our assignment is not to prune the branch. 
Our assignment is not to cleanse the branch. The true vine at the direction of the vine dresser has provided us with the cleansing message, the words of truth, the words of life. And, and if, or I, I dare say, we remain connected, we are persistent, the outcome is predetermined. Either we remain and position ourselves to bear fruit, or we don't remain and we're severed from the vine. Either we remain and we bear fruit, we don't remain, we're severed. Uh, John 15, chapter, three, uh, chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. New Living Translation says, you have already been pruned and purified by the message I've given you. Remain in me, I will remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. What I wanted to do, and I didn't, I didn't do it today, is um, I was telling you about my tree, and y'all can probably hear me talk about that tree because I'm, I'm excited to have tangerines on there. Okay. But there are, some, there are some little tangerine fruit that were ready to produce. I mean, they, they were actually tangerines, but they fell off the tree. I don't know if they fell off because I don't know why they fell off the tree. I don't know if a little animal was going in and plucked it off because I know sometimes the squirrels will go up and they'll eat the stuff. I don't know why it fell off the tree, but it fell off the tree and it died. Okay. What does it you say, Pastor Ron, what they have to do with us? Because sometimes we, for whatever reason, we separate ourselves from the vine. That fruit is not going to live. When you, when you go to the store, when you go to the store, you go to the produce section, and you get that fruit, and you take it home, and you put it in a fruit bowl, and you don't get to it soon enough, what's happening to that fruit? It's rotting. It's decomposing. And it is of little value to you. Now, I know some people like their, their fruit, their bananas a little brown or whatever. Okay. But I'm, <laughs> I don't eat bananas, so that doesn't matter to me. They're brown, yellow, green, whatever. Okay. But, but there's some fruit that once it's, once it's started to rot, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. Okay. It, toss it out. <laughs> when they come in and they do that big truck, that's about all it's good for. Okay. The branch Although a part of the vine is not the vine, the branch, although a part of the vine is not the vine, and we vine, I said a little earlier that we're not assigned to do God's job. We let God do our job, uh, his job. We do our job, which is to bear fruit. Okay. Um, let's go back to Genesis a little bit. When the enemy didn't, what the enemy didn't tell the woman at the tree was that disobeying the commandment that God gave about eating from the tree will result in a false sense of self-sufficiency. What the enemy didn't tell her is that if you eat from that tree, you're going to have to, you're going to start trying to rely on yourself to work things out. When you get separated, because you're not connected to the vine, you're going to have to try to start figuring some stuff out. And I'm telling you, you can't do it. Okay? He didn't tell her that humanity will begin to think that we're capable of resolving our own issues. We will begin to think that we're capable of fixing our own messes. That's why we go out today and we take fig leaves to try to cover up the mess that we make. When we get disconnected, we go and try to fix stuff, but all we're doing is covering it up. And what happens, we walk from one mess, we think we don't fix it, we turn around and guess what? We walk into another mess. Why? Because we've separated ourselves from the vine. We're no longer connected. If you remain connected to the vine, you are going to produce fruit. All right? Today, when we choose not to remain connected to the vine, when we decide that we don't have to do what the Lord says, when we decide we don't have to follow, obey the examples of Christ, what, and that we can do whatever we want to, we're not fixing our messes. In fact, we can't fix our mess. What we end up doing is only covering it up from one side, but if we examine things, examine things more closely, we understand that all we did was push. <laughs> I don't know if anybody clean like this. I, I heard about people who clean like this. Okay, I heard about it. I Okay, you go and sweep. <laughs> I don't know. You know when you got relatives coming. Oh, you got people. You got some VIP. <laughs> you got some VIPs coming to the house. You go and take everything and you stuff it into the closet. <laughs> you sweep it up under the rug or whatever. Y'all walking and you're tripping over the rug. <laughs> All a big old mess up there. Okay, that's what we do with our lives. We just we just push that stuff. We try to hide it. We try to suppress it. But guess what? It's still there. We didn't fix a thing. All we did was just save the mess for another time. When it all boils down 
to it, we discover that without Christ, without remaining to connect to the vine, we can do nothing. All right? Listen to this. I don't know if you all, back, back in some time, we, I used to do what they call pr computer programming. Okay? And there was a, a thing that's called an if-then clause. It was, it's a program that you would write. Okay? But listen to this. This is the if-then clause or cause and effect clause. In John chapter 15, verse 7 and 8. But if you remain in me, and if my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want. And it will be granted. If you remain in me, if I remain in you, then you can ask for whatever you will. That's what it says. Okay? Remain. That's the key. Ask and it will be granted. And then when you produce much fruit, you are my disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Okay? We've been granted permission. We've been, we've been invited into, we've been honored with the privilege of. It's a condition. If you do, then you can. Y'all say that with me. If you do, then you can. <laughs> All right. Remaining connected to divine positions us to receive more than we could ever deserve on our own. Imagine with me, if you will, that you are, con that you are connected not just to the vine, not just to the soil, but you're taken back to the time of creation. Okay? The resource that is now available to you is the same source that was enacted when God said, let there be. By remaining connected to the vine and completely surrendered to the vine, so we have the resources of creation at our disposal. We go back to Eden and the promise given to Adam, we are restored back to the place where we have dominion over all things. Okay? Now, somebody may be saying, Pastor Rollins, where you get that from? What, what, is that some kind of new teaching that you're talking about? No! Look at Christ! Look at Christ! Christ was not subject to any laws on this earth. And he said, my father, I do what my father say. I do, I say what he says, and he says, I bring glory to my Father. And, and, and when he fulfilled it, he said, it is completed. I've done everything you asked me to done. I fulfilled it to the very last detail, to the end. When we remain connected to the vine, we're not just connected to the vine, but everything that feeds the vine, everything that supplies nutrients, everything that gives nourishment to the vine, we are connected. We are connected to Eden, to the creation Listen to this, Do, uh, Luke chapter 12, 32. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. That's what it says in the Bible. Remaining connected vine means the power of creation, the power at creation is present and active, operating within and through you. Pastor Mingo tells us often, there's an anointing that can be on you, but there's another anointing that can be in you. How? By remaining connected to the vine. Does it sound like I'm fussing at y'all? That's not my intent. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a few things and I'm going to stop. Okay? At the time, oh, all right. <laughs> I'm going to say two things and I'm going to stop. I got more, but I'm going to say two. 1 John chapter 4, verses 13 to 17. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes, this is the Apostle John talking, and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. It's all about Christ. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. If somebody's willing to give up their child for you, they think a lot of you. 
Christ surrendered his life at the, at the request of the Father. The Father gave up his Son to satisfy his righteous requirement. And Christ gave up his life for us. Okay? We can put our trust in the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God is love, it continues on to say, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. More perfect. So we will, not be afraid, we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Okay? We talked a little bit about food inspectors last, well, last week. Okay? But at the time of inspection, the time of judgment, we have confidence that our connection with the true vine is all that we needed to bear rich, sweet, more excellent fruit. Again, it has nothing to do with me. When we go there weeks and say, look, I'm, 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 with, I'm with the true vine. <laughs> I didn't get here on my own. I'm here because of the true vine. And, and that, that relationship, I think, is going to provide us an, an, a welcome and an extended invitation. All right? I want to say that. And then the last thing I want to talk about, um, when, we, when we remain connected to the vine, the true vine, our production becomes the responsibility of the vine dresser. And I, I kind of referenced that a little bit earlier. Okay? But here's a story, and I think most of us are familiar with it. Okay? One day... This is Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 8. One day Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. The story goes like this. Our farmer went out to plant his seed. As he scattered it across the field, some fell on the footpath, footpath where it was stepped on and the birds ate it. Somebody say with me, disconnected. Okay. Other seed fell among rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died for lack of moisture. Somebody say disconnected. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up with it and choked the, out the tender plant. Somebody say disconnected. Still other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as he had planted. Somebody say connected. If you abide in me, if you remain in me, if you dwell in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. You will bear much fruit. And this will bring my father joy, bearing much fruit. The key, the key is to remain connected to the vine. Now, I, I have some good news for some of us. I have some good news for us. Those who do Jesus... <laughs> Through Jesus, those who were, those who are wild vines can be or have been grafted into the true vine. Those who of their own abilities were incapable of producing any good fruit because we've been grafted through Christ into the tree, we now are positioned so that we can bear richer Sweeter, more excellent fruit. Paul told the, the, the Gentiles in the book, I mean, he told them in the book of Romans that God is able to graft one plant, a wild plant, a wild plant, and graft it into a good plant. Through Christ, we have that available to us. All right? My statement to us today is I don't care where you are right now. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're dealing with right now. I don't care what is happening in your life. Okay, get connected to the vine. Get connected to the vine and stay connected to the vine. We used to sing a song, get in Jesus and stay there till he comes. <laughs> get in the word and stay there. Stay till Jesus comes. Y'all remember, anybody remember that song? That, that's one of them old, old holiness songs. Get in the word and stay there. Stay till Jesus comes. Okay, and so what we want to do now is I'm going to extend to you an invitation. 
that, that you may say, Pastor Rollins, I, I heard what you said. I, I did a fruit inspection, and my fruit doesn't bear. What I'm, what I'm bearing is, is not, I don't, it ain't quality. Okay, and that's your judgment, not mine. Okay, but but I, I, I know that there's supposed to be something different coming out of me. And I'm telling you that if, if that's where you find yourself, there's only one solution. There's only one solution. There's only one solution. It's through Christ. Christ. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other. Jesus is the way. It's through Christ. And so what I want to do is I want to extend to you an invitation. If you don't know him, I'm going to lead you to a simple prayer. And if you will pray after me and you will pray with conviction, okay, guess what? You don't have to do anything special to be connected to vine. Okay, he will do the work. The vine dresser does the work. So I'm going to lead you through a simple prayer. And if you pray with conviction, then you, you, be, you immediately become connected. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me of all of my unrighteousness. I thank you, Lord God. Your word says that if I confess you as Lord and believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead, that you would save me. I do that now. I make my confession of your lordship. I surrender my life to you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Now, I'm going to ask you, if you've made that prayer, you, maybe you were a, you've never been connected to vine, or maybe you now have been regrafted into it, I'm going to ask you to, to send us a note. We want to hear from you. Okay? You can email us at jesusjplifecc at cox.net, jplifecc at cox.net, or you can write us a letter at Jesus People Life Changing Church, 800 Northwest 39th Avenue, Gainesville, Florida. 32609. We want to hear from you because we want to partner with you on this journey. And, and I'm not saying that we're the perfect tree. I'm not saying this is the perfect place. Okay, but what I do know, I know this. Okay, our hearts are to live for the Lord. Our hearts are to bring glory to him. And so if you want to be surrounded by people who are going to help you to get better, I extend to you the invitation to come out. Send some information to you so we can send something back to you so that you can now and grow in your walk with the Lord. Amen. Well, thank you all so much for your time on this evening. I pray that you found something out of this time, this hour that I've been up here, <laughs> that is of some value to you. All right. So um, we hope to see you out on Sunday at 11 a.m. We invite you to always uh, listen to our, our corporate prayer. We pray on Tuesdays at 6, a, uh, 6 p.m. We pray Sundays at 9 a.m before service. I know that we have some people who come in at 10 a.m. to do intercessory prayer. I want to extend to you the invitation to be with us in our live services on, on Sundays at 11. All right? And, uh, all, and remember always that Christ can change your life, but only you can change your destiny. All right? God bless you all.